This is the second video on 2.5, stretches of functions. In particular, horizontal stretches, and then we'll talk about combinations as well. This animal right now is hibernating. In order for it to hibernate throughout the entire winter, it has to slow down its heart rate so that it doesn't expend more energy than it has to. That slowing down of the heart rate is very similar to taking a graph and stretching it horizontally. Here I have a graph, f at x, and what I'm going to do is apply similar transformations that I did in the last video, except I'm not going to put the 2 here as your a value, I'm actually going to put it here as your k value. Now, I know that in class we had called it a c value before, but I'm just going to call it the exact same thing that the textbook does, and for some reason it calls it k. Now we're also going to see what happens when I put a k value here of 0.5. So here's a regular table of values for the original graph. All we did was we just took some nice points on the graph. So the first one was negative 2 and 0, the second one was negative 1 and 2, and so on. And then we're going to apply these transformations. So the very first one is adding a 2 in here. I'm going to show you through table of values first, and then I'm going to show you through graphing how to apply these horizontal transformations. So that red 2 is actually this red 2 right here. Now it's multiplying an x value. We have no idea what this x value is, but within the entire f at x, I would like it to match this f at x. So I want it to be negative 2. And in order for this box to be negative 2, so I get the f at negative 2, that x must have equal to negative 1. Now the reason that I'd want it to match this guy is because I know what that equals to. f at negative 2 equals to 0. So now that I've made it equal to negative 2, I know that it equals to 0. Okay, so let's try that one more time. This is just how you're going to get all the new table of values, um, so the new orange table of values. Let's try this again. So the red 2 at the top matches this 2 right here, and I want this f at x to look like this one. In other words, I want the inside to look like negative 1. But you have a 2 multiplied by something. So for all of this to look like f at negative 1, that x value must be negative 0.5, because 2 times negative 0.5 gives you the negative 1. And I know what f at x, or sorry, f at negative 1 equals to, it equals to 2. So I know that my y value must be 2. Notice that all the y values don't change after the transformation. What changes is your x values they seem to be halved. So this element, putting the number inside the bracket, is a horizontal um, element. Okay, now, probably the faster way is if we actually graph it. Through the graph, you'll notice that the negative 2, now that we know what it does, is going to be halved to negative 1. The original 4 is going to be halved to 2. But notice that the heights of the dots don't change. The y values don't change. And then this last one had an x value of 0. And even though we half it, it's still going to be at 0. But the height has not changed. Now let's take a look at what happens when we put a 0 0.5 in front of the x and inside of the brackets. So here's your 0 0.5 right here. And again, I want this whole thing to look like this guy because I know what it equals to. Okay, so in order to make this a negative 2, the 0 0.5 has to multiply a negative 4, which is where I get this guy from. And then I'll know that it equals to 0. So again, all the y values haven't changed. The only thing that's changed are the x values, and it looks like they've doubled. Okay, so if we had our graph and we knew exactly what it does, this negative 2 would be doubled to negative 4, this 4 would be doubled to 8, and so on. So overall, 
it seems like if we put a 2 in front of the x within the f at x, we get a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over that 2, or in other words, a half. If we put the half inside the f at x, then we get a horizontal expansion by a factor of, and I'm sorry, it, it cut off just a bit, um, 1 over the half, which is equal to 2. So the general rule for k inside the bracket is, if it's bigger than 1, it's going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over k, which is what the, it's the opposite of what we would normally think because it's kind of the opposite of the vertical stretches and compressions. This, if the k is between 0 and 1, it's then expanded horizontally by a factor, uh, a factor of 1 over k. Okay, and again, if k ends up to be a negative number, um, it could be a compression or um, an expansion, depending on what number it is, but then it would be, in addition, a reflection as well. Let's apply this to the root graph now. So if we have a root graph and we put the 2 inside of the root instead of on the outside of the root, you're going to have horizontal compressions and expansions. And that's going to affect our horizontal steps instead of our vertical steps. So instead of the overs as 1, 3, 5, it's now going to be overs as 1 times a half, one, 3 times a half, and 5 times a half. So 1 over this number. Then the last one's going to be 1, 3, 5, except we're going to multiply them by 1 over this number. So essentially they've doubled. Now let's graph them. Here's the original graph. And then we're going to go over a half, whoops, over a half and up one. So over a half and up one, then over one and a half, one and a half, and up one, and then over two and a half and up one. So notice that it's been horizontally compressed. And the green one, over 2 and up 1, over 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and up 1. Notice that this one is going to be a horizontal stretch. Okay, and this is just reiterating what we just talked about. Here's a combination type of question. Now that we've looked at verticals and horizontals, since this is outside the f at x, that's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Since this 0 0.5 is inside the brackets, it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. It doesn't matter which one you draw first, let's just do the vertical first. Okay, so notice that we have f at x right here, and now I'm going to stretch it by a factor of 3. Okay, so if this height is 0, even if I triple it, it's still 0. This height was 2, but after I triple it, it's going to become 6. This one is the same level. And this one, since it has a height of 4, it's now going to be tripled to 12. And again, a height of 0 tripled is still 0. Notice that the x values have not changed, just the y values. But now that I put in this element, the x values are going to change. And they're going to be doubled since they're being stretched. Okay, so there we go. Notice that the heights have not changed, okay, but we've now stretched it horizontally. So if we had this guy right here as an x value of 2, it's going to be at the same height, but it's going to be at an x value of 4. This one has a coordinate of 6 and 12. It's now going to be 12 and 12, and so on. 